What's up everyone, welcome back to Workshop Rebuild. In today's episode, I'm gonna have a good look at the classic Bing slide carburetor out of the BMW R60-5. We'll have a good look on the internals of this slide carburetor, so I'll give you guys a close-up view on the disassembly on the side table, and later on I'll share with you guys the internals like I have laid out behind me here, and also the cleaning method I use for my carburetors, like that ultrasonic cleaner over there. This right here is the carburetor off the BMW R60-5. This is a 26mm slide carburetor, and right now I will be sharing with you guys the disassembly process of this carburetor, and we'll talk about the internals later on, when I get to the layout of all the parts. So in today's episode, I will be using a 19 millimeter wrench, a 10 millimeter wrench, a small flathead screwdriver, and a little quarter inch ratchet with a flathead bit. Uh, this will come in handy for some of the jets internally on the carburetor. I also have a little pick. This comes in handy for our float bowl pin. So I'll be using this. And uh, just for some jets, I have a little piece of wire right here. Um, I do not actually know the thickness, but it is thin enough to get into basically all the jets I have for any of my carburetor issues. These are the tools I'll be using and let's get right into the disassembly process of this carburetor. First things first, you guys will see the throttle cable is still on the carburetor and to remove that there is a big nut on the top which you will obviously have to remove and I will open this by hand. Uh, if it's very tight, you might actually need a wrench, but this should only be hand tightened, and that's the way you should be putting it back together anyways. So I will loosen this off by hand, and we'll see what's behind this. Right here, I can pull up the slide mechanism on this carburetor, and it should actually be free or loose, but as you guys just saw, it came out a little bit tight, so that means the throttle slide, which is this part right here, and obviously this has to slide freely within the carburetor housing, and uh, it did not do so. So uh, as I can see, there is a little bit of residue on here that will have to be cleaned up later on, but um, that will also come away maybe in the ultrasonic cleaner. So we'll put this aside right now, and I'll focus on the body itself. I'm going to remove the idle jet, which is this big... Uh, set screw right here on the side as you guys will see i can just thread that out by hand if needed you guys can also use a flathead screwdriver i'm going to take this out right here and this should also be threaded in very easily and you also want to make sure that that tip is still very healthy we'll put this aside and this idle set screw also has a spring on it so put this aside and we'll get to the next set screw which is the air fuel mixture and I'm going to thread it out by hand as well. All these should be able to thread out by hand. If not, then you have uh, quite a bit of buildup or corrosion on these threads and you'll have to clean them manually or by hand. This also has a taper on the tip. You want to make sure that's still in good condition. And it also has a spring on it. So we'll put this aside as well. Next up, I want to remove this clamp. This clamp is right here to clamp the carburetor onto the cylinder of the BMW R60. So I'm gonna remove the bolt first, like that. And there's a nut on one side, and then we're gonna take off this clamp right here. Uh, I might actually need uh, some pliers for this. I actually grabbed some uh, snap ring pliers right here, or C-clip pliers, and that will help me just expand this and take this off. This obviously the collar for the carburetor right here. You wanna make sure that the carburetor isn't too damaged and that the uh, cutouts where the carburetor allows it to uh, clamp onto the cylinder are still in good condition. If not, you'd have to uh, open them up again and make those uh, free so this clamp will function properly on the carburetor. So we'll put all this back together so we don't lose anything, just like so. Like that, and we'll set that aside. So basically the top end of the carburetor is off. We took the clamp off and the idle set screw, as well as the fuel to air mixture ratio set screw. Now I'll focus on the bottom end of the carburetor. And for that, I will be using the 19 millimeter wrench and I will take off this cap on the bottom. So I'm gonna take off that. So as you guys just saw, I was able to remove that float bowl cap and 
This has a gasket on it, so obviously that it wouldn't leak. And now we can also see the accelerator pump, which is sticking out right here. That's why they have this, this far down. Right here we have our main jet, and the full pole is still on there, and it's held in place with this wire clip. Now I can push this wire clip off to the side, like so, and remove the full pole. The full pole is very grimy right here. I don't know exactly what this is. Um, but there's a lot of residue right here and it's very sticky. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, but I'll lift this up and we'll see what's underneath. The gasket is kind of sticky right now. So I'm going to take my flathead screwdriver so I don't damage that gasket. I'm going to lift it up and you guys will see the internals of this for the first time, just like me. As you guys will see, there's a bunch of buildup right here. Wow, I don't even know what that is right there. All this white stuff right here. It's a bunch of buildup. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll zoom in. But yeah, there's a lot of buildup right there. So this right here is the float pole. And this little piece or this little tube sticking up is the overflow. If the float would not work in the carburetor, um, it would let too much fuel into the bottom end of this carburetor. And then at a certain level, it would actually go through this little tube and out the bottom. So that's what that little tube is for. Now we'll put this aside and we'll have a good look at everything else. Right here, we have our float. And our float is held in place to the carburetor housing with a little pin. Uh, that's how it pivots right there. And underneath the float, right close to the center, we have our float needle right here. So I'm going to have to remove the float pin first, remove the uh, float itself, and also the float needle. To remove the float pin, I have this little tool. It has a point at the tip. It also has a pretty firm grip, so I can just uh, punch that out by hand here, just like so. And it came out one side, and I'm going to remove that like that so. And also, I'm going to hold the float itself so it doesn't move on me. But I can remove that right here. And this one looks actually very new, so I'm pretty satisfied with that, but we'll test it in the water later on. Put that aside and we'll take out this pin uh, for some reason the pin is damaged right here on the end might have to actually go the other way doesn't look too healthy especially within this carburetor i'm gonna have to see what i can do maybe i have to file this end of the pin because it is damaged and i don't want to damage the bore of the carburetor nevertheless i'm going to remove the float needle which is right here i'm gonna flip it around and that float needle just drops out like so that's the float needle right here. We'll put that aside and talk about that later. So next up, I will remove this float pole clip. I will just grab on one side of that and remove it like so. That is the float pole clip. So I have the gasket still in there. I'm gonna take my flathead screwdriver and remove this gasket. Still looks actually very good. So I'm going to see if I can preserve this by lifting it up gently. Okay, so that's the gasket. Put this aside. We'll look at that later. Now I have the idle jet, which is located right here, and our main jet with the accelerator. Within the accelerator lies our needle for the carburetor and i'll get to that later but i'll remove the main jet first which is this small flat head right here for that i will use the quarter inch drive uh, many people will just use a flathead screwdriver and try to take these out i've had way more success with a quarter inch ratchet for some reason these bits are perfectly flat up front if i use a screwdriver um, it always tends to round off the edges over time and when i want to go and loosen off any jet uh, it will always get damaged. So uh, I always use a bit because the bit is perfectly straight on the front edge. Uh, so I can put that down onto the jet and it will not damage my jet. So that's right in there. And I'm going to make sure to loosen this off. But at the same time, I'm going to take the 10 millimeter wrench and hold on to the next component, which is down below. Just like so. And I'm going to remove this jet like that. And now if it's already loose, I can just turn that off by hand. So I'm going to take this main jet out, and we're going to have a good look at it. 
So this right here is the main jet. It is a 0.40 jet. And you just want to make sure that you can see through this jet. Uh, if not, this main jet is clogged. But I'll put this aside and make sure you do not lose this because it is very small. Next up, I would like to remove the accelerator right here. And to do that, I will use the 10 millimeter and lay the carburetor flat like this so I can remove it. Like so. I'm going to just thread this out very slowly, making sure I do not damage anything. You guys will probably see there's a, a bunch of residue right here, and this actually came out of the carburetor. So uh, if you have any of this residue in your carburetor, you really want to clean out your carburetor because uh, it will not function properly. Some of these are actually even hard little bits and pieces. Uh, I don't know exactly what that is, but if that's in your carburetor, you really want to clean it out to have the best performance you can on your engine. So right here, I'm gonna take out this accelerator and we're gonna have a good look at it. Okay, so on the front end, it's actually corroded and this is a brass piece. Um, so whatever came into the carburetor was very filthy and that would obviously uh, reduce your performance on at least one cylinder if you have one carburetor which is gummed up so i'm going to put this accelerator aside and we'll have a look at it later on the table now i'm going to flip this carburetor around we still have one more piece inside i might have to actually tap there should be a part in there that would come out so i'm going to take my flathead screwdriver and i'm going to push down right through the center where our needle would go and just like that i popped out the next part um, this is the jet where our needle will follow through and as you will see that is very corroded and this is a 2.68 needle jet so that's the uh, size in millimeters and I will have to clean this very good so we have proper performance for our needle once it penetrates through this hole. I'm going to put this aside and don't lose that either because it, it is also very small. We have one more jet right here and that's in this area. This is for our idle. And once again, I'm going to take the flathead screwdriver or flathead bit for our quarter inch drive uh, to make sure so, uh, so we don't damage the jet itself. Once again, I'm gonna loosen it off by hand. Okay, it's already loose. Just like that, came out. And on this jet, something very interesting to see, you will have an O-ring on this height. So you wanna make sure that the O-ring comes out with it. Uh, if not, then it's still in that bore, or maybe it actually even fell into your float bowl already before. But as you will see, this jet has four bores around the perimeter and one following through all the way. Right on this jet, you should see, you should be able to see through it. If not, it is also clogged that will also reduce your performance on your engine and obviously would not allow your engine to idle properly. We still have one more piece, which is this right here. This acts like a little pump, but what this actually does is it taps on your float. So when I tap on the float down below, it will open up the float needle and allow a little bit more fuel to come into the bottom of your carburetor. So to remove this right here, I'm going to depress it. And on the bottom, we have a nice little clip I'm going to take my flat screwdriver, just pry on that, and right there I have the clip. I'm going to put that aside. Everything in here, everything inside the carburetor is very small. And now I can just let go of that. We're going to have one big spring. And we also have this little push tab, which, which activates the float down below. So this all goes together and it will be put aside. Now I'm going to take the 10 millimeter and remove this from the housing. I'm going to lay it flat once again and remove it. And just like that, it is removed. Once this adapter comes off, you will also see a nice copper washer. So make sure you keep that with it and put that aside. Um, I have to clean this out. I'm actually not sure if my ultrasonic cleaner will be able to do this, but we'll see so in a second. So I'll put this aside and we'll look at the throttle cable assembly and our throttle slide, which is this part right here. 
We have our little cap, which we threaded off before. We have a big spring, which holds this assembly together. And underneath or within our throttle slide, we also have our main needle. This will go into our needle jet, which is this part I shared with you guys before. It is very corroded and that needle has to run through this needle jet. And to make everything function properly, everything has to be perfectly clean and everything has to be without any wear. Uh, so to remove this assembly, I'm going to have to grab onto the cable and we're gonna compress it together. So we're gonna bring the top end of this assembly to the throttle slide. And we wanna make sure that the cable pops through the board down below and we're gonna thread it into the other and that will loosen off this assembly. It will look something like this. I'm gonna compress this and as you will see down below, it pops out the head of the wire. I'm gonna thread it into the other spot just like that and it will all come loose like so. Very simple and we'll have a good look at that later on on the table. Now we have this very big spring. You want to make sure there's no damage on this. This could also hinder your performance, especially when you grab the throttle grip. Um, it might not be very responsive. So check this spring if it's still good. Next up, we can remove this whole assembly right here. Uh, I'm going to push the cable through just like that. I pulled it out and the cable still looks good. The cable housing has to be repaired over here. But I'm going to put that aside and you will notice that this is now off as well. We have our carburetor top, which is underneath the ring nut, uh, which we can tighten onto the carburetor. And this is how it gets mounted on there. We also have on our carburetor top, we also have a large O-ring, uh, but it is very small in cross section. That lies just on there. So once you tighten up the ring nut, it kind of dampens the parts and that they do not get damaged or that they don't rub on each other as you tighten the ring nut. I'm going to put this assembly aside. And we'll look at this later. On the throttle slide, I still have the slide needle and inside of the throttle slide, I also have a washer, which is inside. The washer comes out first. It has a very distinctive shape. That's how it looks like. So I'm going to put that aside. And now I'm going to push on the slide needle like so. And we're going to also see that the slide needle is hooked up to the needle retainer. This is how it looks like. So the needle has been set to the second top groove on the retainer. And we're going to have to remember that for later on when we reassemble this. On the right of the screen, the ultrasonic cleaner is ready to go. The basket, which is next to the ultrasonic cleaner, will get filled with carburetor parts. I will share with you guys how I fill this up and let it rip. Uh, the first session will be 20 minutes. That's how long I do carburetors usually. And if it needs an additional 20 minutes, I'll do that once more. So let me share with you guys how this works. That right there is a 22 liter ultrasonic cleaner and this will get filled up with water all the way. And I actually already used it before, so it's still a little bit warm. We have 25 degrees Celsius water and usually when I turn it on, it reaches about 40 and it can go up to 50 right there. My sessions are 20 minutes long and I will be using this for the carburetor. Now, beside this, I have this basket. All the parts will get thrown into here. And beside that, I also have a little mesh basket. This is handy for all those little jets and all of those little parts that come out of the carburetor. That little wire that is dangling right there is for our float because obviously the float will float in water and I don't want that to float. So I have this. Um, wire push through the float and that will sink to the bottom and that will also get cleaned. I'm going to throw the parts into the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll give you guys a little time lapse. Once that's done, we'll have a good look at all the parts laid out on this white table.
All the parts came out of the ultrasonic cleaner perfectly clean. Now I laid them out on this white table to give you guys a better view and a better understanding of all the parts involved in this carburetor. So I'm giving you guys a top-down view on the assembly of this carburetor. Throughout the middle, you will see one line of parts. Uh, this is basically the main housing, the float bowl, the throttle slide, and the cap, which completes this whole carburetor. Off to the bottom of the screen, you'll also see another float bowl, a float, and some external accessories on the carburetor. On the top of the screen, you will also see various parts, but all these parts on the top are mounted within the carburetor. So we have some jets, we have some springs, we have the needle, and obviously the float, which is down below as well. When I received this carburetor, which is the Bing 26 millimeter carburetor for the BMW R60-5, I received another float bowl, which seems to be in brand new condition from the original owner. And I noticed that there are two distinctive options for this carburetor, as you might notice over here. Uh, one of them has this threaded cap on the bottom with a gasket, and that is a little bit longer than the other float bowl. Uh, as you will see, one is drastically longer. I would say it's about 10 millimeters longer from the base of the float bowl. When we look on the inside, everything is exactly the same, except for the position of the overflow tube. The new one has the position over here, and the older one or the original one uh, the position is on this height. One more thing I noticed was the height of the overflow tube. When we look at it from the side, you'll also notice that the overflow tube on the original one exceeds past the top of the float bowl by four millimeters. And the one on the newer float bowl um, actually is on the same height as the float bowl top. So those are some distinctive differences I just noticed. And I'm not sure exactly with which one I will go for yet. Um, the original one I still have to clean up on the inside because it didn't clean up all too well. So I will have to see which one performs better. And uh, if I do choose one, I will let you guys know in the near future. I will go to the floats themselves. This is an old float which also came with the bike, but new floats were already installed. This one is much lighter than the original one. This one is heavier. So I will go with the new one, but I will keep these just in case something happens. Uh, this is still in good condition. Is It is just a little bit heavier. So with that aside, I will focus on some of the external parts right away, which are here off to the bottom of the screen. You will obviously see our fuel adapter that has been cleaned up very nicely. And the threads on each set screw are very clean. Uh, like I mentioned before, you also wanna make sure that the taper on your set screw is still in great condition. Uh, if it has a ring or a worn surface on the front, you might have to machine this or even replace it. So that's something to take in consideration. And all the springs externally are still in great condition so I can reuse them. The original clamp is still in great condition as well and I can reuse this. Further down the line, we also have our fuel tickler, what they call this. Um, this is mounted externally and you can add a little bit more fuel into the bowl of the carburetor. Um, this little tickler actually touches up on the float bowl like this and it will touch it and allow a little bit more fuel to come into the bottom of the bowl. Uh, that might give you a little easier start just in case it's cold outside or something in that manner. So this right here might have to be replaced as the rubber is not in great condition, but I will see if I can find this somewhere online. I talked about all the big parts involved in this carburetor and now I'll focus on all the small parts laid out in this single line right here. All these little parts are made of brass and they are machined to perfection. So we have the proper fuel going into our airflow, which then leads into our combustion chamber. In the middle of the screen, we have all these little parts laid out and all these parts allow us to pass fuel through into the air, but also on the top end of this, we can also control the fuel that gets mixed with our air. All the parts laid out here don't make much sense. So I will put them together and explain what each part actually does. So right here, we have an accelerator pump housing. This is a brass piece. It gets threaded into the housing of the carburetor. And down below, we have a bore, which leads almost all the way to the end. On the end of this, we also have a nice radius, which will then push up against our needle jet. And it will look something like this inside of the carburetor. As you will see, this rocks around like that, 
but once this gets inserted into the carburetor housing, it will be in one line and you really want to make sure that these two surfaces right here are perfectly clean so they can mate properly within the housing once this gets tightened inside of the housing. This needle jet can be exchanged. This is a 2.68 millimeter needle jet, but this needle jet also corresponds with that needle right there. I'm actually not even sure if they make any bigger or smaller ones. Uh, you'd have to check online but this is a 2.68 right here, which corresponds with that needle. So within this accelerator housing, the first thing that we'd have to install is this little part. Um, we have a bore within this part, as you guys will see right on the very end. And there are also four holes on the other end. And what this actually is, is one bore follows through, but not through all the way because we have four bores. Now this will allow fuel to pass through as a little spray in four directions, as you might notice. And this is the first thing that gets inserted. Four bores get inserted down into the accelerator housing, just like so. But before I put that in, I really wanna make sure that the spring is located around this little part, like so. It must be seated around that head. So I'm going to insert and then drop it in very gently so everything is aligned like that. Now the spring protrudes all the way out and that's very important because that little part in there has to be spring loaded against the stop which is in within this accelerator housing. The next thing I will be installing is this nut. There is just a little nut right here which holds this all together. You wanna make sure that's seated as well on the spring and then you can thread this in by hand. I will only hand thread this right now just to share this with you guys. And like that, everything is assembled inside. We have the part up front, the spring in the middle, and the nut in the back. Now, this is no jet on the bottom. Our jet is still right here on the table. I will take this and you will see that bore is perfectly clean on the jet. And like I mentioned before, this is a 40 or 0.4 millimeter jet. And that will be inserted or threaded into the backside, which is the nut. So I'll hand thread this in like that. And obviously this will be tightened with a screwdriver later on, but that's how it gets threaded in there like that. And that is basically the full assembly of the accelerator pump. I was able to explain the accelerator pump, the needle jet and the needle itself. The needle is held in place with a washer and a retainer, which all get inserted within our throttle slide. Um, the throttle slide is spring loaded with that spring over there. I shared with you guys the disassembly earlier on in this video, but we have one more jet in this carburetor and that is this jet right here. This is our idle jet and this gets inserted on the bottom of our housing. Our main jet and our accelerator pump are in this location in the bigger bore and the idle jet, which is this small jet right here. It has one bore going straight down the middle, as you guys will see. It is perfectly clean. We have eight bores around the perimeter on the bottom of the idle jet. And the idle jet is located in this bore of the carburetor housing. This idle jet will allow fuel to pass through the jet and into our air as it passes through the carburetor to give the engine the proper idle it needs. And this is very specific. This is also a 40 jet and this will just allow the engine to idle. I was able to share with you guys a bunch of information on the internals of this 26 millimeter Bing carburetor. Obviously this carburetor is very old. Nowadays carburetors also have upgrades and there are different types of carburetors. This is a slide type carburetor, so keep that in mind. In the beginning of this video, I shared with you guys the disassembly of a very dirty carburetor. I then threw that in the ultrasonic cleaner and it cleaned up pretty well. I'm not saying it's gonna be perfect, but it cleans it up very well, especially the internals and those little passageways inside of the carburetor. After I took everything out, I did clean everything off with compressed air, so everything was dry. I laid everything out and I shared that information with you guys. If you guys have very dirty carburetors internally or externally, I would suggest you also clean it by hand a little bit manually. Obviously, there are some picks out there that you guys can use or even certain brushes where you can get in little passageways. Really make sure that all the passageways within your carburetor are cleaned out and you can even blow air through them and make sure that all the debris comes out. You can also use a flashlight to pass light through the passageways and look out the other side to really make sure that those passageways are clean. 
If you found this video helpful today and if you learned something, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. If you have any questions about anything I used in today's video and any questions about any specifics on the carburetor, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, I will have various tutorial videos in the near future and I will finish this BMW R60. So if that's something you're interested in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So stay tuned for upcoming videos.